This demonstration will show how to build a basic web application using Tapestry 5. In about 10 minutes, we will create a very simplified web app along the lines of Reddit or Dig. It's going to let you submit links and then vote for the ones you like. Here's an overview of what you're going to see. First, we're going to create a quick start application using Maven in Eclipse. Then we'll add the Hibernate dependencies so we can persist data. Next, we're going to create an item entity to persist the URL, title, and votes. Then we'll create a simple form to accept input, a list to show the items that have been saved, voting so you can move popular items higher in the list, create validation to make sure that we are getting real URLs, and then implement a refresh using AJAX when an item is voted on. Let's get started. So first let's create the archetype. I'm going to use a locally installed snapshot, but you can use the archetype catalog at tapstry.apache.org. So we've created the application, the quick start application. Now let's copy in the dependencies we need for Hibernate into the palm. I'm just going to copy these from the Tapestry website. So there's the dependencies. Now we need to copy over the hibernate.cfg.xml file. Once again, I'll just copy it from the Tapestry website. This goes in the resources directory. Okay, so now we've got a quick start application that can support Hibernate. So let's get it up and running just to make sure everything worked. We'll go to localhost 8080. And there we go. Okay. So it's live and working. We're running it with Jetty just from the command line. So now let's create a new class. This is going to be our entity, our item entity that will hold the URL uh, title and votes. This belongs in the entities package. And since there's not one, I'll have to create it here. So now we need to tell Hibernate that this is an entity because we want to be able to persist it. We need to give it an ID and tell it how to go ahead and generate that ID. Now we'll add a string for the title, a string for the URL, and then an integer to represent the number of votes. We're going to go ahead and make our getters and setters here. And then let's go ahead and change our votes to make it non-visual just so that won't show up in the forms we use later on. So let's test it, make sure it runs. We have to reload the application because entity changes aren't picked up in the live class reloading. Now let's jump over to the index. And first we're going to create a property called new item to give us a place to, to something to put into the database. We're going to inject the hibernate session and then we're going to create our on success method. So when a form submits successfully this is what's going to be called and this is going to just store the new item into the database. And we need to mark this with commit after annotation to tell Hibernate to go ahead and commit the transaction once it's done. Okay, so now over to the template. We're going to create a bean edit form and give it the new item object. So now we'll go back and look at our application. And oh, there's an error. I didn't mark something private. So let's come back over here. This property needs to be private, the session. We'll reload it. There we can add a title and URL. So let's try adding my title. And just test.com. And there it added it to the database. Of course, it doesn't show it to us because we're not listing it. So now let's create a list. First, we need to be able to get all the items out of the database. So we're going to create a method that returns a list of items. We'll call it get items. And that's just going to take the session get all the items. We'll order it so the ones with the highest number of votes are at the top and return it as a list. And there we go. 
So now back over to the template. We're going to create, use a loop component, and give it the source, which is our items. And now we need a value to stick it in each time it iterates through here. So we need to jump back over to the index and create a property that holds an item. We'll just call this one item. And we'll stick this all in an unordered list. Like so. And now we'll put, put this in a list item. And then let's test it by just showing the title just to make sure everything's working correctly. So we call item.title. Save that. Let's see what we've got. Okay, the first one showed up. Let's try adding another one. My second title. And it's there too. So it's working. So let's flesh this out a bit. First of all, we'll make the title link to the URL. like so and we'll show the number of votes and now let's build the thing that will actually let us vote we're going to create an action link with just a plus sign we'll give it an ID of vote and we'll tell it the context is the item so that we know which items actually being voted on so back over to the index.java we're going to create a method called onActionFromVote, and it's going to take an item as an argument, and that will be the item that we set as the context, and we'll just increment the vote by one. Oops, okay. And then we'll persist that. And we need to mark this as commit after because we want the transaction to commit once it's done. Okay, so now we can vote for our items and they move up in the list. The highest voted item is at the top. Let's add another example here. Oops. Okay, so that's in the list. Now, what happens if we just put in gibberish? Okay, this lets us add it as a URL but then it kind of messes things up because it doesn't begin with HTTP. So let's validate our URL. So I'm going to add a method here that will get called when the form submits called onValidate. And we're just going to create a URL and if it throws an error, tell them to check it. You need to create a component to get um, the bean edit form. We're going to add that. First I'll give the bean edit form an ID so we're talking to the right one. We're just going to call it form. And this is so we can get the message back out to the template. Okay, so on validate, just create a URL and give it the URL from the new item. And then we'll catch, import that, we'll catch the, uh, the exception. And if there is an exception, we'll just set form.recordError to tell the user something went wrong. And that will keep the on success from getting called because there's been an error recorded. So now if I try this, oops, my nemesis, the private variable, let's add that in. Save it, okay. Let's get back to the index. Okay, so now let's try typing in gibberish. And now it gives us an error and explains what happened. But if we put in a correct URL, it works. Okay, now every time we vote on something, it's actually doing a full page refresh. So let's go ahead and replace that with an Ajax call. So the first thing I need to do is tell the action link that I want it to update a zone. This will keep it from actually doing a round trip for the whole page. Now I'm going to wrap the entire loop in a zone called um, list zone. Make sure it covers the whole loop. And we need 
you come over here and add the zone. Make sure I make it private this time. Okay, so now on the method that that handles the vote action, I need to return an object. I'm going to return the list zone dot get body. Save that. Now when I refresh, it just refreshes the list using Ajax.